What's up, everyone? It's Cody with Money Vesting. So as the quarter comes to an end, today is the last day of the first quarter of 2023 and the markets are absolutely ripping. So NASDAQ, S&P and the Dow, they're all pushing higher. NASDAQ more specifically is up double digits on the year, a little bit over 14.8% to be precise. Tom Lee from Fundstrat comes to us with five reasons as to why the market has more room to go higher, more upside moving forward in April. So hope you guys enjoy this video, find it helpful. If you do, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're just joining us for the first time. The link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. Today is literally the last day if you want to join and of course be a part of our money investing community and access that 16% annual discount after tonight. The 16% annual discount goes away. So link's going to be down below for all the alerts, all the private videos, tutorials, lectures, and all the other benefits as well. So First things first, he talks about how many skeptics, anecdotally, their clients, Fundstrat's clients, are likely sniffing at these gains as mere noise until the bear market reasserts itself. But Tom Lee believes that the first quarter 23 gains now solidifies that bears are now, quote, trapped at the moment considering what is going on in the market. So their five reasons are primarily based on the uh, co- the what is it? The, the contained crisis. I've got notes here. My, I can't read my own handwriting. We've got contained crisis. Number two is the dovish Fed, right? And number three are going to be technicals. Number four, the seasonality, where we're heading into April, which I'll go over seasonality charts. And number five is going to be short sellers. So first thing, the banking blow, blow up with Silicon Valley Bank Signature and all the other banks. Tom Lee says that it was, quote, a cleanup in aisle seven, then a full-blown crisis. It was a social media generated bank run that is not spread from regional banks to a broader loss of confidence in the banking system. Second, traders are going to start perceiving a monetary policy issues as the most supportive that the Fed is going to make a dovish hike or be more dovish in their tone in communicating with the markets in March. And we expect incoming softer inflation data to support a further pause from the Federal Reserve as well. So number one, a very much a contained crisis. The banking crisis has not spread as a contagion onto some of the other banks and the confidence is still strong. And number two, the market participants are now expecting a more dovish Fed as they are also communicating uh, some firm additioning moving forward and not really going on with these aggressive hikes anymore. So we're seeing a little bit of an end to these rate hikes. Of course, only time will tell if this is indeed the end or only the beginning to something even more crazy. Consumer inflation expectations, which was, by the way, released by University of Michigan, stood at 3.8% over the next one year, observed by the latest uh, surveys. And uh, Tom Lee notes that those are significantly below the the February CPI reading um, at 6%. So at 220 basis points lower, it is the largest negative spread since late 1982. That's actually a good point that he makes, which I'm going to go over and chart in just a minute. And then he also talks about how uh, technicals, the S&P 500 had just recorded two successive positive quarters. So Q4 and Q1, a trend that over the past 50 years has not been seen in a bear market, barring a big sell-off on Friday of worse than 5.5%, two consecutive quarters of gains validate the start of a new bull market. And this only solidifies our view that October 12th was the bear market low, and we are six months into a bull market is what Tom Lee also mentions. He mentioned that before certain trends, there's also a seasonality trend seasonality trend at play because every time the first five trading days of the year where we're down 1.4% and in which year the previous year was actually negative, the markets end up having a very strong March and April. So we accelerate in the months of March and April. So that's a seasonality trend. And finally, speculative positioning from bears and from short sellers remains overly bearish and traders are net short 202,000 e-mini S&P 500 futures at nearly the same level as seen when the market hit its recent trough back in October, which is going to put a lot of pressure on short sellers to cover, thereby fueling this rally even further higher. This right here is the chart, which he pretty much shows in that report. Consecutive quarters of gains equals a new bull market for the S&P 500. And again, this is fourth quarter of 22 and first quarter of 23 and two consistent quarters of gains equals start of a new bull market according to Tom Lee and the last time that happened uh, during a bear market was back in uh, 2006 I believe he's pointing out to 2007 2008 actually he's pointing out to two quarters of gains equals uh, start of a bull market 
But then you also have to understand what ended up happening is that we saw the next couple quarters as really, really modest gains. In fact, the, the quarter in 2010 was pretty brutal. And then, of course, pretty good quarters uh, in 20, at the end of 2010 going into 2011 um, as well. Now, this right here is consumer inflation expectations or the chart that he's referring to. And the one year consensus uh, in the University of Michigan survey, this was actually uh, conducted at the beginning of March. And right now we're sitting at 3.8%. That's for the next one year. That's, you know, very optimistic from consumers. And over the next five years, the average is expected to come down to 2.8%. And right now the core CPI sits at 5.5%. So that is the spread that they're talking about. And this again is a 6% headline CPI, not core headline 6%. And the expectations for the next one year Inflation expectations sitting at 3.8%. And this spread is the biggest that we have seen since late 1982. So it has been close to 40, 41 years that the spread has widened. Consumers see far less inflation than CPI, which again is the widest spread, largest gap since 1982, which is also, uh, there is some expectations that inflation is going to come down rather fast here in the US very quickly. But it, of course, only time will tell. And this right here is a seasonality chart, which pretty much goes over April um, 2023. And uh, you'll notice that right now, over the last 72 years, uh, going as far as 1950s to 2022, uh, we've had 51 up years and 22 down years with an average return of 1.45%. So if you think about that probability or those odds, right? So 51 divided by 73 we're looking at a 69, almost 70% probability that April is going to be a green month versus a 30% probability that it is a down year or down month. Uh, in other words, it's going to be red. And the average gain is 1.45%. And of course, more specifically, last year's April was absolutely brutal when the markets were down almost 9%. NASDAQ was actually down over 13%. So again, we're going to find out this month in April 2023 what the gains are going to look like. Um, of course, we don't have any Fed. We've only got inflation on the 12th. We've got unemployment next Friday. And of course, we've got all the other economic reports. And more importantly, the earnings season is going to get started for the first quarter 23. I've got another video coming out on earnings later today. So that's going to clear some things up. And what are some of the threats to potential earnings in uh, in 2023? I'll go over that as well. But 2021, very solid gains. And 2020, also very solid gains of over 16.5%. But of course, it was all part of a massive QE project from the Federal Reserve and a lot of buying of bonds and mortgage-backed securities as well. So that's going to be the entire report. And I am a little bit more optimistic going into April. And uh, Tom Lee also is. I mean, regardless of the month, he's almost always very bullish. But let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think? I do like the idea that short sellers are a little bit overly bearish and they are positioned in a way that they're, they're, there's uh, you know lots of puts or negativity in the markets right now, which could work in a counter trend rally to the upside. But then, of course, is it going to be long lasting? Is it going to be sustainable or is it just going to be a small blip in the overall trend, meaning that we do push higher on a short term or intermediate basis and then start to rotate back down as earnings start to come through, inflation numbers start to come out. And of course, the Fed's policy is going to be the most important driving factor for where the markets are headed in 2023. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, if you did, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're just joining us for the first time. Link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. As always, happy investing, and I'll see you all in the next video.